So we built a robot in three days. We did it again, three years running. We're all going to tell you a little bit about the systems that we built. I work primarily on the four bar linkage. A four bar linkage is four bars, a ground link, a link here, and two long, long, long lines. Allows you to keep the front mechanism parallel or perpendicular to the floor. It's a basically a big trapezoid, and as you want, move one link, uh, the other move links will move with it. Uh, we use Modulox rail uh, to frame out the sides, and just a simple threaded rod end uh, with a long tube that we tapped to create the top link. The bottom link carries all your force, so the, uh, and the top link just constrains the whole thing. It's all adjustable in the slots. That's kind of cool because what it can do is tilt the front forward or back if you jump it up or down. Uh, and we played with that a little bit as, as we were building uh, our tote grabbing mechanism. Um, the whole assembly is mounted to boxed out Modulox channel again. Uh, we have a lot of it. We're very comfortable with using it. So uh, the, again, the base is a little bit adjustable within that rail. Um, the whole thing is powered by the new Dart linear actuators from IR3 Creative. Um, they're controlled uh, by a lead, an Acme lead screw, uh, powered by two SIM motors. Uh, we designed it so that it could lift a lot of weight. Each one of these actuators could put, over, uh, put out over 200 pounds of force, and they travel about five inches per second. So they're pretty quick and uh, can lift up a pretty large stack of totes. I think we've done three or four with a trash can on top already without a problem. Um, the nice thing about using the lead screws is they don't back drive. So uh, or at least not significantly. So as you lift and you try to control the position of your arm, it just stays and it's very smooth, it's very quiet, not a lot of vibration, and it removes a lot of the components uh, that you would have had otherwise, like a gearbox and a chain assembly. Uh, when you change directions, there's not a lot of problems. So we're really happy with the performance of the arm overall. Uh, it's controlled and stopped by the two limit switches uh, and a talon on the side. What's really cool about this new system is we were worried about stalling and sticking the actuators, but you can actually plug the limit switches right into the talon without any code. It's a sort of safety mechanism and it won't allow you to run any further. So you run it out, hits one limit switch, it stops, run it back in, hits the other limit switch, it stops. And those are totally adjustable within this slide uh, channel slot. So uh, we can set the limits so they won't hit the actual frame. So things we learned and things that we could do better on this mechanism. Uh, we spent a lot of time boxing it out to try to get some rigidity. Uh, you have a large moment arm at the end of the gripper. So as you turn the robot, if you don't have a, a structurally rigid frame, uh, it, it can tend to sway and bend. Basically, you want to get it rigid enough so that when you push it, it will try to turn the entire frame. So at the base or at the front, you do your best to do that. You can't quite get there. You just have to drive a little bit slower. So the next thing that we learned was when you use two linear actuators, it's really important to have some sort of velocity or, or tight master-slave uh, position control so that they move up at the same rates of speed. They're very close to each other and it didn't cause any problems, but that was one area that we felt like we could improve to get a little bit more uh, stability out of the arm and move it faster at all times. Another thing that we learned about the four bar linkage is that it's really important to, to optimize the position of your linkage. When we go to full extend or full retract, we may have a little bit of extra travel left on the, the actuator that we could have used for a more efficient lift or more range of motion. Right now where we have this set, we actually had drawn the clevis now a few inches up the tower and back a little further, and that gave us our full six and a half foot lift. But now that we couldn't fit the clevis mount in the tower itself, we had to mount it to the base frame, and we don't quite get the same amount of lift. It hasn't hurt the performance because we can still stack a five and a, and a trash can on top, just grabbing it in different ways because there's plenty of power. But if you had said you already had a five tower and you want to put the trash can on top, that might have been somewhere where we could have uh, a little bit of extra wiggle room. So we're going to do a tutorial on how to do an optimization for a four bar linkage with a linear actuator or with a, a motor powered version as well. Um, and we'll also try to do a little bit in, in the way that the math is done so you can determine how fast you'll move and how much force you'll need uh, out of an actuator in order to provide the lift you're looking for. 
So that should be coming in the next week or two, we hope, and then a blog, maybe about it as well. I'm here to tell you a little bit about the control system on this year's robot. Uh, special thanks to uh, Mike Capioli for uh, actually coming down here and uh, hand delivering a lot of the controls for the robot and uh, putting a lot of uh, hard work to help prep us with the system here. Um, what we have is uh, we've got the new SRXs. Um, they are attached to each of the darts on uh, both sides here uh, from Cross to Web Electronics. Uh, we also have some of the old Talon SRs, um, which are controlling the drive as well as our uh, intake roller system in the front there. New voltage uh, regulator module uh, as part of the new system and uh, the PD board also from uh, Cross the Road Electronics for uh, strong power distribution, a lot of new features there. Uh, and of course, the new NI Robo Rio from National Instruments, um, which is uh, controlling the robot in general. Um, this robot utilizes uh, CAN uh, a lot through the uh, Talon SRXs and uh, for some closed loop control, which was used especially uh, with the uh, limit switches on the darts and uh, was very useful uh, in helping with the control on the arm. Uh, in general, uh, some of the things that were thought about was just a little bit more feedback, trying to get some uh, sensors involved to um, you know, help, help us figure out when we have you know, the totes in the proper position or um, maybe some positioning on the arm. And uh, that's really about it. It's electrical, you know, pretty simple. One thing that we expanded upon with our design and prototyping is that the figure we originally designed was only to grab from the middle part of the tote over here. We expand on that and realize that we won't be able to grab the tote from not only this side, but also from the wide angle over here. Through a lot of modifications, we came up with this unique design that's over here to utilize both features of the tote from one side and also on the narrow end as well. One of the things we also saw a need with the design for the gripper is also the need for the recycle bin, or the green bin that we have here. There's lots of talks of picking it up from the middle here, which is doable. Unfortunately, if you notice, it's on very precariously. So we modify it by adding a separate hook for the actual recycle bin itself. This design makes it a lot easier to utilize on both features of the game elements for this year's game. If we were to improve this overall design, we would actually make it one uniform piece instead of scrapping together several pieces together. It makes it more uniform, more seamless, and works very well in integrating with the rest of the systems on this robot. One of the reasons we went with a very passive system for our grabber instead of an active is its simplicity. Yes, with an active system, we will have more control over the totes, the recycle bin as well, but with this passive system, a lot of teams can implement this generic design and expand on it very easily. It's also integrated very well for testing and tweaking as well. So if anything does break, it's less complicated of a system. It's a lot easier to replace as well. One of the biggest disadvantages with this design right now is we're only able to lift on the upright position. Any of the toes at the beginning of the game that start upside down will not be able to actually lift in this configuration without manipulating into an upright position. That is the biggest drawback with this current design. Quiz? Quiz? Yes. Perfect. I'm going to tell you about the intake system that we have. It's got components from a few different manufacturers on it. The uh, system overall is kind of a combination of an active and a passive system. Uh, there's components for both things. Uh, first off, we've got the uh, Andy Mark motors on their uh, six inch wheels that rotate the burning tote, and when it does that, it aligns it, it'll to ripen it. And it's spring loaded, and it can write it itself, so we don't have to come in at the perfect angle for it to take it. We can come in at an angle, we'll passively react to the tote and align that and get it centered. But when you do that, it causes issues because it's squeezing so hard with the springs that you won't be able to lift it. So what we came up with is mounting a dart actuator onto some, a dart actuator onto some rev robotics linear slides. And what that does is allows this actuator to float here and still give us the freedom of movement of these springs, but we can open it uh, we can open it up to acquire from the wide side or help us when we're trying to 
uh, lift or there's a whole bunch of different things that it helps us do. Uh, on that we put a VEX Robotics uh, Versa Planetary 25 to 1 with the bag motor. We've tested it and it will be able to grab the totes off of when they're all backed up against the wall. We can index the tote in here, move it back and forth however we need. We can grab the bucket and rotate it so because our gripper only works on the handle, we can rotate it and grab it off the handle. Uh, some of the improvements we would do is to be able to have these possibly actuate back because we're losing a small benefit that we have of our arm is that we can reach over things, but the arms usually hit first. So we can open it a little bit, um, but we lose a little bit of the advantage we have being able to reach over things in the arm, which is one of the advantages we really liked about the arm, is that we're not stuck uh, only working in the first foot of our robot, we can actually reach forward and have a little bit of depth on it. Thank you. Thanks. Robot in three days. We finished the robot. We're all done in three days, but you guys have six weeks left, and we think you can improve upon what we did, and you can do better. Yeah, we want to. We want to help you along the way. So make sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Subscribe to our channel YouTube. We're going to list a bunch of how-to videos and tutorials about what we did here and things that we think can help improve our build and help you improve your build along the way. Meow. 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 Go ahead. Go ahead. You're good. Spin it. There you go. What are you oh, you got looped around the uh, 